got on the kicker crab. Oh, kicker crab. What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? It's Matt, Matt Niak, and I'm back with a really quick tip for you guys. This is going to be a good one because this is something that frustrates everybody. I was recently on the water fishing and I actually hit the water what was at the bottom of an outgoing tide going into what would have been a low tide however because of some prevailing winds we had what was almost a negative tide so we had to make do with what we had and fish it but I wanted to share with you guys how we were able to be successful on that trip and share with you how that you can be successful when you find yourself on the water trying to fish a negative or low tide in your area as well. So let's go ahead and jump into some tips and tricks to help you get bent. That's our fish. That's our trout right there. Heck yes. All right, as I said, fishing a negative or a low tide can be super frustrating. It's often really frustrating because you can see the areas that you want to target, but you can't quite get to them because there just may not be enough water uh, to get to where you're looking to target. However, even though that, that is very frustrating, that doesn't mean that you can't get on some solid action. And there's an easy way to do that, and it's a whole lot easier than you may think. And it's really by just finding the right places to look for these fish once that tide starts to fall. So if you're fishing a negative or a low tide and you're trying to find these fish but you can't quite get to where they're at, the next best thing to do is to get where they're gonna be. And the way you think about that is if the tide is falling out of these shallower zones on these mud flats and into these bank areas, where you need to be are the deeper areas next to uh, cuts channels or creeks that may be in a little bit deeper water because once there isn't any water left on those mud flats or anything those fish don't have any choice but to retreat to that deeper water zone so the perk of looking for deep water is the fish will be doing the exact same thing so you have already set yourself up for success now, how do we find these deeper zones? I know it can be hard to figure out where's deep, where's shallow when you're looking at the water, especially if there's some glare on the water and you can't quite tell with the way the current's moving. It can be often hard to tell where's deep, where's shallow. So a great way to do that is through satellite imagery. Whether that be Google Maps or Google Earth, you can often zoom in and you can be able to tell where a deeper zone is just based on the coloration of the water. Now, another fantastic way to be able to find these deeper zones is by using our new Smart Fishing Spots app. In our app, you have amazing underwater topography views of all the areas that you're looking to fish. Not only do you get all of this killer underwater mapping, you actually get different layers inside of the app that can show you where oyster beds may be in any of the areas that you're looking to target, or even grass layers that are near the areas that you fish. So so when you're looking to target these places, when you make your pre-trip plan, this can be an absolute game changer. So using satellite imagery or the Smart Fishing Spots app is a great way to find these deeper zones. But once you've identified where these deeper areas are and where you're going to set up at, you need to think about something else. And the next thing you need to think about is having the right presentation. Now that we know where the fish will be, we need to be thinking about trying to target these fish with the correct presentation. Now let's think a little bit about fish behavior during these low tide and negative tide times. We know that these redfish will often hunker down in those shallow zones in the mud or something and almost bury themselves in there and not move much. And that's because there isn't a whole lot of movement going on in the water around them. And those fish are super sensitive to any type of vibration or disturbance that may be going on around them in that area. That's another reason it's super hard to sneak up on fish at low tide because they can hear you coming from a mile away. So these fish stay hunkered down in this mud or in the shallow area waiting to feel the vibrations from any other bait that they can feed on in the area. But if it's something that's too close or makes too much of a startle to them when it hits the water, it will definitely spook them. 
So not only having your bait presented in the right location, but as well as in the right way is super important. You always want to try and lead the fish when you're casting to a fish that you've seen in some of these low water conditions, because if you try and cast directly at them and get too close to them, the chances are you're actually going to spook that fish rather than catch them. Keeping this in mind, you need to be thinking that you want to be using a lure and a presentation that's not going to have much splash when it enters into the water. Granted, there isn't much water level in the area that you're targeting, so if you're using a heavy jig head, it's going to make a really large splash and a huge disturbance in that area and really spook out any fish that are in that area. So I want to go ahead and take a minute to tell you about some of my favorite presentations for negative and low tide situations. Let's start off with one of the classics and one of my all-time favorites. First and foremost, the uh, first up to bat will be the Power Prawn US. Say. It is rigged on a Haas Helix hook. Now, this pairing right here is absolutely phenomenal because it's such a great finesse presentation. This actually works great in the shallows uh, because it doesn't leave a big splash when it hits the water, and it does a really great job of remaining streamlined while darting through those shallower water areas and not leaving much of a disturbance. It's super lightweight, so you can also drag it along the bottom without spooking any of the fish that may be nearby. So once you've successfully landed a soft cast, you can actually gently run this across the bottom to trigger those bites. Now, if you're in a deeper zone where you would be retreating to or those fish would be retreating to, this works great to actually glide down that water column. It has a very, very natural fall and just a really great presentation presentation that those fish key in on and can't help but strike when it's coming through that water column. Now, when you have a low tide or negative tide situation, we all know that a lot of the bait gets flushed out of the grass areas or some of the marshy areas that you may be fishing or even the mangroves. Uh, and what that means is a lot of those shrimp or other bait that may be hiding in that high tide structure ultimately gets flushed out to those lower areas. And those predatory fish are right there in wait. Now, we'll often see grass shrimp or shrimp popping on those shorelines, just like you'll see in this video right here. Killer indicator that there are feeding fish in the area going after those shrimp. So in those situations, a power prawn, just like this one right here, would be a great option to throw. Again, this Haas Helix hook does a great job of remaining weedless and has a phenomenal hookup ratio. So this is a great way to target those fish at a negative or low tide. Now moving along to the second lure that is actually on the list and one of my favorites, that will be the kicker crab. That's a kicker crab rigged on a Texas eye jig head. I do love that uh, pendulum swinging uh, jig head there, that free swinging jig head, because that actually uh, gives uh, a, a really great characteristic to this bait. It actually gives it a little bit of a clicking noise when it's bouncing off the bottom. Not only does it have a really great noise, but this crab also looks super natural with that uh, free swinging claw because this bait actually, because of the buoyant properties of these Z-Man baits, this bait will almost stand up and this claw will actually be uh, floating there in the current. So that actually does a really great job of attracting those fish uh, in that low water level because we know those crabs start to come out of that grass area as well just like those shrimp right so those crabs come out and they're looking to feed just like the fish are but what those crabs don't often know is they are actually going to end up becoming a meal so throwing a kicker crab just like you see right here has been absolutely phenomenal for me in some of these low or negative tide times now, the third and final, but not the least of my favorite by any means, would be the Fred 2.0 rigged on a Z-Man Pro Shrooms jig head. Now, Fred the Ned, as I like to call this presentation right here, is absolutely one of the deadliest presentations I have in my repertoire. I love throwing this in the late fall transition period all the way up to the spring. You guys are gonna be seeing me throw this a whole lot in these next couple months. But this right here is a phenomenal presentation for low tide or negative tide situations. And the reason is because this is, is such a multifaceted presentation right here. 
This thing is absolutely versatile. You can swim it. You can jump it. You can hop it. You can twitch it. You can drag it. You can swim it. You can do it all. You really can with this bait uh, because it's such a lightweight finesse presentation. So as I said, you can swim it just like you would a normal bait. Now, you can hop this along the bottom like you would a twitch bait. You could actually uh, reel this in and let it fall on a uh, drop or a pause, and that is a great way to trigger strikes from trout in those deeper zones. Now, if you're in an area with not too much bottom structure, this is a great way to drag the bottom as well because this bait actually stands up almost vertically as you bring it across the bottom. So as you're bringing this bait across the bottom there, those fish have a really easy target uh, just standing vertical right there in front of their faces. And again, if you aren't on bottom and you are actually just working this on a drop in a depth change, say you're in a four or five foot depth change, but this 10th ounce or sixth ounce Ned rig comes floating down very naturally and slow in that water column, it's an absolutely irresistible treat for those fish. Now, if you guys are interested, we do have all of these options, whether it be the Fred, the Kicker Crab, or the Power Prawn. We have all of those in our online tackle shop at fishstrong.com. Keep in mind, our insider members do save 20% or more off of all of their fishing tackle inside of our tackle shop. So not only the exclusive access to the Smart Fishing Spots app, but also amazing discounts on all of your tackle inside of our tackle store. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that bell down below. We love hearing from you guys as well. So make sure you leave a comment down there if you have any questions or comments for me about this video or if you have any uh, low tide or negative tide tactics or lures that you like to use, especially in this upcoming winter time, I would love to hear them. So until next time, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we are the number one online fishing club out there because we actually guarantee we're going to help you catch more fish, not only with fishing tips and in-depth courses, but also our new Smart Fishing Spot app. That actually tells you exactly where the fish will be, as well as the best times of day to fish there, plus so much more. You'll also save tons of money with tackle discounts and make tons of new fishing friends in the Insider community. So thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you in the Insider community community soon.